brought to you by the makers of Champion Spark Plugs, used by engine experts the world over. And now let's all play What's My Line? From New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. <laughs> and now, the delightful author of a new book, his newest book, called Letter to a Conservative, uh, just published last week, but already in its second printing, and we have the original printing ourselves, Mr. Steve <clears throat> Allen. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. I should say thank you, Mrs. Daly, the name of your thank new you. play, as long thank as we're talking you. about all our new things. <laughs> I'd like to talk about uh, the next young lady you're going to meet. Her little boy is out tonight trick-or-treating in a limousine. How do you like that That's for class? Way. Yes, Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, a man who is both tricky and a treat, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Speaking of tricky and treaty, you know, it is Halloween tonight, and a little while ago, a lot of kids came to the stage door and said, trick or treat. And in a moment of madness, we said trick. Well, here's the trick. John Charles Daly. <laughs> Well, it's nice to see that Bennett's full of the Halloween spirit. <laughs> Steve, it's always great to see you back in your old place on the panel. Nice to have you with us, sir. Thank you, John. Always a pleasure to be here. Winter laid its tender hand, in part at least, upon New York this week, so we'll hot things up for you tonight. We've got some very interesting games for you to play. Uh, we'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the show. But right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? William Price, right, sir? <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Price, where are you from? I'm from Warsaw, New York. Warsaw, New York. Where's that up uh, or near? Uh, Buffalo and Rochester. Near Buffalo and Rochester. All right, may I present the panel, Mr. Price, and we will tell you that Mr. Price is a student and he has an avocation in which we're particularly interested tonight, and that's what you have to play with. Will you join me over here, Mr. Price? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we would, uh, we'd we would describe Mr. Price as self-employed and admit that he deals in a product, and we'll begin the uh, general questioning with uh, Mrs. Daly. Thank you, John. Mr. Price, is this a product that I might like to have? Yes. Is the product one that one might put in one's mouth? Sometimes. Uh, is there anything colorful about this product? Yes. Does it come usually in one color rather than a variety of colors? Yes. Does this product grow? Yes. Does it have anything whatsoever to do with this particular October 31st? Yes. <laughs> you have something to do with Halloween? Yes. Well, you're not a pumpkin head, but maybe you have to do with them, do you? Yes. You grow pumpkins? Yes. <laughs> I think in view of the fact that Arlie did so well, we'll throw all the cards over. That's what we ought you to do. You bet. Well, we tried to... 
I'm afraid, Bill, we tried to get away with something, and we didn't get away with it. We've this all is... been thinking about Halloween all day, all day. John. That's well, the reason. And I knew he wasn't a witch. No, that he was. <laughs> Don't rub for us. Now, this is rather... Bill is in, in school. He's 16 years old, and for the last four years, he has been growing pumpkins to make money for his later college education. And he grows four to 5,000 pumpkins. Really? Yeah. How much and does sells a them for cost? Big pun? How much does a pumpkin cost? From 10 days? cents to a dollar and a half, am I right? Oh. I tell you, I know all these things. They're right at the tip of them. What's and the it's matter a... with the 10 cent ones? <laughs> 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 What's the matter with the 10 cent ones, uh, Bill? Real small ones of the pie type. Oh, but, oh, I see. You make little. pies out of the 10 cent ones and you throw the big ones at people like Bennett, right? The dollar and a half special. Is that, the, is that the price he sells them at or we buy them at? That's the price but you sell them I at. I sell them at. Yeah. After that, you're on your own, Steve. Now, Bill does the best he can for himself, and then we're, we've got to go out and do our own dickering, right? Right. Well, it was very nice of you to come to visit us on, on, ha on Halloween and uh, congratulate you much, and I'm sure I speak for the panel for your uh, energy and initiative. It's nice to have you with us, Bill. We'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. Most winners of major races use champion spark plugs because champions have no equal for performance. Every major U.S. airline uses champion because champions have no equal for dependability. Every major maker of fire engines in the U.S. uses Champion spark plugs because you can count on Champions for quick starts. Volkswagen uses Champion spark plugs because Champions give real gasoline economy. Rolls-Royce specifies Champion spark plugs because Champions have no equal for quality. In fact, Twice as many car makers the world over specify champion spark plugs. So for your next spark plug change, insist on champions. And now to meet our next contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Karen. Prior. Right here. Is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Pryor? Mrs. Pryor. Mrs. Pryor. Where are you from? Honolulu, Hawaii. Honolulu, Hawaii. Well, you've come a long way from one of our sister states. Nice to have you with us. Mrs. Yes. Pryor, may I present the panel? Mm -hmm. Now, will you join me over here, please? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Pryor is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Cerf. Mrs. Pryor, just to make sure, can we eliminate Halloween from your activities? Yes, you can. Uh, well, now, Hawaii, I guess, is principally noted for tourists and pineapples. Have you got anything to do with either tourists or pineapples? Yes. Well, which one? <laughs> don't tell him. <laughs> oh, don't tell him a thing. Tourists? I didn't, I didn't mean to trick you. It is tourists that you have something to do. Yeah, with. there is a relationship between uh, Mrs. Pryor. Do you Price, actually talk to tourists? Sometimes. Do they come to you, Miss Pryor? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything to do with finding them lodgings or uh, things to do while they are vacationing in Hawaii? No. Well... No, you... The no. question was posed, do you have anything to do with finding their lodgings? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Uh, John, did you... I'm sorry that I, I missed it. Did you say self-employed? No, salary. Oh, salary. Mm -hmm. uh, do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Are your services uh, of any more interest to men than they would be to women? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, m Mrs. Pryor, uh, do the people come to you after they have already gotten their lodgings? In other words, I might go to you after I had registered at a hotel? 
Yes. And uh, would you then uh, speak to me or possibly give me anything? Let me, let me clarify a point here. Bennett asked if there was, in a very broad term, any relationship between the tourist and the activity in which Mrs. Pryor is, is involved. And we agree that there is a relationship between that activity and the tourist. We don't want to mislead you. All right. If I were a resident of Hawaii, could I use the service too? Yes. And would I be likely to? Oh, yes. I think perhaps you would. Do you have anything to do with communications? No. No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Pryor, then you have no connection, direct connection with any hotel or lodge in Hawaii, is that correct? No connection. Do you have anything to do with transportation? No. Five down and five to go, Miss French. Is there something entertaining about what you do, Mrs. Pryor? Yes. Um, does your job uh, very often keep you out of doors? Yes. Uh, would you... Uh, ever do your job near the water? Yes. Might you ever do it in or on the water? Yes. Do you have anything to do with the marvelous surfing that is done in Hawaii? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Do you teach anything? Yes. Do the people to whom you teach it get in the water to learn it? <laughs> The question is, it asked, was asked, do the people you teach get in the water? There's an assumption in there that's at fault. So that's seven down and three to go, Mr. Kilgallen. Uh, is it still Steve? No. No. I don't oh. know. Um, do you have something to do with um, animals? Yes. Not fish. Because I don't think you can teach fish anything, can you? Sure you can. Oh, yes. The They're under, not fish. Undersea divers teach Look how they teach those sardines for a conference. Mechanic, this isn't a, come on, let's have a little discipline here. What's going on? John, this isn't a conference. It's an argument. <laughs> okay. Um, would you teach a mammal? Do you teach a mammal? Yes. Is it a porpoise? Yes. Yep. You're a porpoise teacher. Right. <laughs> porpoise trainer. Very good. <laughs> Mrs. Pryor is with uh, Sea Life Park, is, is that name right. it? And they, they, uh, they do a lot of work with porpoises. Actually, uh, you put two shows a day on. Ten uh, shows a day. Ten shows a day at Sea Life Park, but they also work with the universities. And uh, we've all been interested in Sea Lab. And out of Sea Lab, we read at least that the, they feel there's a great potential in the intelligence of the porpoise and uh, the future work we might do, development under seas. It's, you... it's a very useful domestic animal. We also have open ocean porpoises like uh, Tuffy that mm. worked with Sea Lab, and uh, our divers feel the porpoises save them a great deal of work, and uh, they're very biddable even out in the open sea. Well, now, when you say they, that your divers feel they save them a great deal of work, what do you mean? In what way? Well, uh, we have, for instance, used porpoises as messengers. The diver goes down to the bottom and forgets his wrench. He just calls the porpoise, and the porpoise comes. Takes the message, goes to the surface, gets the wrench, returns well, to the great for Western <laughs> Union. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Pryor, they've taught, I think they've been able to teach some sea lions to do that, too, haven't yes, they? Yes, I think you could do it with sea lions, too. They're a little John's bit... John's better than the messenger boys we have at Random House. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Pryor, what huh? do you say to the porpoise to get him to get your wrench for you? Well, we talk to them with a police whistle and a bucket of fish. And they know that means a wrench. <laughs> They are smarter than we are, aren't they? Yeah. You know, John, well, one of the teachers does a very good job in his first booking at that school. He's held under for another two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that, can you work with uh, the porpoises in a group? Which I yes, think you're working we, in this field, aren't we you? We also work with uh, one of our, our uh, shows at Sea Life Park is about old Hawaii, and we use the porpoises as a sort of corps de ballet working in... Unison six or seven at a time. Six or seven at a time. Wonderful. Well, I hope we can come out and see it. And thank you very so. much for visiting thank us. Thank you very nice much. Nice to have a member of the state of Hawaii. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, this message. This is the one. See? There's the water goblet he used. Oh, this is a Westinghouse washer. Right. It's their new top loader. Hello again. I brought a friend this time. Heavy duty. Heavy duty 15. Why the water goblet? I'll show you. Let's set it at spin. 
Now, there's an identical eight pound water filled ball like this inside the heavy duty 15 and inside this other leading washer to represent a really heavy off balance load of clothes. Oh, that means vibration. They'll walk all over the place. Not the heavy duty 15. It's built so strong, it's all but vibration free. It hardly feels like it's running. Now, let's set this washer and spin. Look at it shake. Try this test at home with an off balance load. But if you don't have a Westinghouse Heavy Duty 15... You better use an old peanut butter jar. <laughs> you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know, the panel is blindfolded. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, That's sir. true. Good, will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, panel, a different form of questioning That's now. Right. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we will begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in show business? Yes, Mr. Sir. Are you at present appearing either in a play on Broadway or in a motion picture that's just been released? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Are you uh, known best for your work then in television? Yes. Mr. Allen. <laughs> Have you uh, ever done comedy? <laughs> yes. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, Have you appeared in an essentially comedic television series? <laughs> yes. Mr. Sir? I don't know why that only got one laugh from one person. Somebody doesn't think he's funny. Uh, have you ever appeared as a member of this panel? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Are you leading us up the garden path with that BBC accent? <laughs> Are you an American? Yes. Mr. Allen. Oh, dear. No, that's not over it. I have a, uh, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take a vacation next week, actually. <laughs> Could I just say a name? There's, there's sure. a similarity in the voice. Are you Steve Lawrence? <laughs> no? Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, in the course of your series, do you play a romantic character? <laughs> no? Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Is the series in which you appear named after you? Yes. Miss Francis? Oh, good heavens. Do you sing? <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no? Yes and no, Mr. Allen. For his supper. Uh, I still get a kind of a Brooklyn sound from the voice. <laughs> Hey, Joey Fisher. Well, <laughs> no, no, five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Was there any time in your life when you were not an American citizen? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. I'm really at a total loss. Do you, have you got a, a wife who is also in television? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Good heavens. Did, now, was it uh, established that the show is named after you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Is it on every week? Yes. Mr. Allen. What's on every week? Uh, <laughs> Do you wear glasses? Do you wear glasses? No. Eight thousand two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you have a late night show? No. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, I presume you're on CBS. Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, it's Arthur Godfrey, maybe. Miss Francis. 
Miss Francis? I is it Arthur Gottfried? Uh, no. Oh, no. That's ten dollars. No more to go. Andy Griffith will be very happy to say hello to the whole bunch of you. I'm surprised to see Tom so close to <laughs> That's the first time I ever got that far. Wonderful, Andy. <laughs> How do you like, Steve, how do you like that Brooklyn accent? It's a good voice, Andy. That's a good Brooklyn accent. Don't ever use it again, fellas. <laughs> now, Andy is quite remarkable. You know, I, I suppose the public even has uh, become thoroughly familiar with what they call the Nielsen ratings. And in the last ratings, you check me on this if I'm wrong, the special you did was in the top ten. Your weekly Andy Griffith show was in the top ten. And the program you produced, Gomer Pyle, was in the top ten. So I think he does rather well. Mm -hmm. Well, we, I don't produce it, but uh, I know the boys who do. You know the boys who do. <laughs> yeah. have you ever, <laughs> Andy, have you ever used that voice before, the one that you just threw at us? Uh, yes, sir. When I was in a show called The Lost Colony on the coast of North Carolina when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that's done on the island. Which, yes. Sir. Which island is that? Oh, it's called Roanoke Island. Roanoke Island, yeah. yeah. And, and it's annually done. Yes. Sir. Is that where you got that British accent? With a Brooklyn overtone? I don't know where I got it. <laughs> BBC I don't use it much. Brooklyn <laughs> overtone. <laughs> What'd you do in New York? Just uh, having came fun, I hope? Came to see some friends and uh, to be on your lovely show and to visit with everybody. Mm -hmm. It's nice that you picked us to do some visiting with, sir. We thank Enjoyed you it. for that. And thanks a lot. Thank for you very much. Watch my line. Good to see you. Panel, and we'll have another contestant after this word. What will you like most about subhold stockings? The way subhold look. think what you like the most is what Suppose does for your ego. Suppose makes you feel good. And when you feel good, you look good. Suppose stockings. Great for your ego. And now a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Harrison, New York. Harrison, New York. That's just up here in Westchester County, right? Yes. Good. Nice to have you with us. Miss Ross, may I present the panel? And now will you join me over here? We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Miss Ross is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin with uh, Steve Allen. May we rule out flags? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a gray-haired old lady, Steve. Oh, yeah. No, that was Barbara Fritchie, you're thinking. Oh. Well, whatever. <laughs> Yon gray hair. Uh, this is an irrelevant seeming question, but have we ever met? Yes. Oh. You want to arrange something? No, I want to rule <laughs> myself out. You did. One down tonight, <laughs> go to Kill Gallup. <laughs> Uh, Miss Ross, uh, you are obviously extremely decorative and chic. Uh, has that anything to do with your work? No. This is two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Ross, do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Uh, might it be anything no. engaged in either publishing, printing, or the like? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Thinking of the Reader's Digest. Do people come to you for your service, Miss Ross? Yes. Do you work in an office? Yes, I do. Uh, 
Does your job require a formal education? Mm, no. No, it does not. I think um, <clears throat> we have to give you a no. I would t at the same time like to indicate that it would be wise to have a, a pretty solid basis of education before you took the job. Mr. Allen. If I may vouchsafe a personal opinion, Miss Ross, you have a somewhat flirtatious manner. <laughs> is, I mean, this is the highest compliment. And if I weren't high, I wouldn't make such a compliment. <laughs> Has this any relevance, granting the assumption is valid, has it any relevance to your work? No. <laughs> I doubt it's time to go, Miss Joe Gallagher. You mean a homely girl could do your work just as well if she were qualified? Yes. All right. Do you work with your hands at all? No. Don't not even pick up a pencil? Any, not beyond any routine use of I the hands. I didn't hand. say beyond any routine. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> we'll agree that uh, the hands play some part, Miss Joe Gallagher. Yeah. Uh, you would occasionally pick up a pencil, perhaps, yes. and write on a piece of paper? Mm -hmm. yes. You would use the telephone? Yes. With your hand? That's all I meant. It's, it's very really hard on the teeth. Uh, <laughs> when people come to you, uh, are they seeking some betterment? Yes. And uh, do you give them some advice? Yes. Uh, is it av advice about something other than their health? Yes. Is it a advice about, uh, well, may I rule out that it is about where to find a house, like a real estate person? Yes, you may. Tell me quickly what you're shooting at, because we're running I'm out of I'm not effect. shooting at anything. You're not Maybe. shooting at anything. Bennett. Baby. Take, take a guess. Something to do with babies. Something no. to do with babies. Does she no. teach a language? No. No. But you've got to admit, it's about the most attractive stockbroker you've seen in a long, ah! long time. Miss <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross is a registered representative with H. Henson Company down in Wall Street. And a real old-fashioned stockbroker. Nice to have you with us, ma'am. Got some yeah, babies down right. there. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, again, no matter how high you are, it's great to have you back with us and hope you'll come back again soon. I want the family to know that was a joke, Joe. <laughs> good, good night, Arlene. Thank you, John. Good night, dear Steve. It was lovely to have you here. Thank you, Arlene. Good to be back. Good night, Dorothy. Steve, you're always high in our esteem. Thank you. Good night, Bennett. Right. John, John, does your broker look anything like Betsy Ross? Mine doesn't. No, nope, mine night. doesn't either, Bennett. Good night, and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line? Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cott. This is Johnny Olson speaking. <laughs> What's My Line was brought to you by Suppo Stockings, the beautifully sheer stockings that look as good as they feel. <laughs>